Hey there, math students. Let's look at this story problem here. It says Laura kicked a football that landed 50 feet from where she kicked it, and it reached a maximum height of 80 feet. Part A, sketch the path of the football and write an equation that models it. So let's sketch the path of the football first. I'll just make an XY axis. Maybe something like this. And let's see, I'm going to say Laura is right here at 0, 0. You don't need to position Laura here. You can position her at another place on the x-y axis, but it's I think it's easier if you put her right here. So pretend this dots Laura, and she kicks a football, kind of goes up in the air like so, and it comes back down right there. So let's see if we can um, fill in some information with this graph right here. Now remember... For this graph, this is my horizontal distance in feet of the football, and this is the vertical, kind of the vertical height of the football in feet. So these, the x and y axis are both measured in feet. Now, let's see here. It says, Laura kicked a football that landed 50 feet, so it landed 50 feet from where she kicked it. In other words, she kicked it, reaches a maximum height, and it landed 50 feet away from her right here. And this is going to be zero. Now, let's see. So in other words, it hits a maximum height here. And that occurs, where does that maximum height here, where does that occur? It says the maximum height of 80 feet right here. So this is going to be 80 feet. It's important that you understand this graph, what all the numbers mean. So let's think about this. She kicked the football. It reached a maximum height of 80 feet and it comes back down, and when it hits the ground, it's 50 feet away from her. Now, there's one more piece of information I can put in. The vertex, this is called the vertex. It's the highest point on this graph. The vertex always occurs, the x-coordinate of the vertex always occurs halfway between these two x-intercepts right here. So let's see, what's halfway between 0 and 50? Well, hopefully you're thinking 25 right here. So this is 25. So the coordinate of the vertex is 25, 80. 25, 80. And what that just means is when the ball is 25 feet away from Laura, it's at its maximum height of 80 feet. Now we can go ahead and make an equation. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have the vertex here, so I'm going to write the vertex form of a quadratic equation, and it looks like this. It's y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. That's the vertex form, and this squared part's what makes this look like the letter u. It's just upside down. And hopefully you remember that this equation kind of comes from transforming quadratic functions, right? The a value is kind of our stretch or sh shrink factor. It makes the graph appear skinnier or, or wider. And this x minus h piece makes it move left or right. And this plus k shifts it up or down. But what I'm going to do here is solve for a. That's what I really need to do because I have all these values. I'm going to substitute in for y, x, h, and k. Because, I again, I have all these values. I just need to find the a value. So let's do that. And the hk value is the vertex. So this is my h value right here. And the k value is 80. So when we're doing this, remember the hk value occurs at the vertex. So the h value is 25 and the k value is 80. And my xy values, well, I have two possibilities for that. If you think about it, this is really 0, 0. And this here, this 50, well, let's think about this. This is when it hits the ground. So when it hits the ground, it's 0 feet high in the air. So I can use for my xy value either 0, 0 or 50, 0. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this as my xy value. So x will be 50, y will be 0. Again, you could use um, your x value over here. You could use x is 0 and y is 0. It doesn't matter, but again, I'm going to choose this one. So let's start plugging these numbers in here. So the y value is 0 from right here. 
equals a, that's what we don't know, we're going to solve for a, times my x value is 50 from right here, 50. Now again, if you were using this point, your x value would be 0. It would come out the same. Now let's bring down this minus sign. I'll replace h with 25 right here. Bring down your squared plus k, and the k value is right here. It's 80. Now let's just solve this equation for a. So it's 0 equals a times, well, let's think about this. What's 50 minus 25? We want to do this stuff in the parentheses here. That's 25 squared. Bring down this squared plus 80. Let's just keep going here. So 0 equals, well, let's see here. 25 squared is 25 times 25, which is 625 times a, right? So this whole piece becomes 625 times this a value, or just times a, I should say, plus 80. And now I'm getting close. I need to subtract 80 from both sides because I want to get the a by itself. This drops to 0, and I have 0 minus 80 is minus 80 equals 625a. And now the last step is to divide both sides by 625, and that's my a value. 625 here as well. These drop off, and a equals, I'm going to write this over here, a equals negative 80 over 625. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to leave it like a fraction. Again, a equals negative 80 over 625. I wrote it over here. You can reduce this. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it just like that. That's fine. And now I'm almost done with writing the equation. This is the first part. So let me scroll down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is rewrite this thing in yellow, the vertex form of the equation. So that's going to look like this. Y equals, let me give myself plenty of room here, y equals, a times x minus h squared plus k. And now I'm just going to substitute in for three things. I'm going to substitute in for a, h, and k. So it's going to be the following. y equals, well, my a value is negative 80 over 625. Right, so I just replace this a here with this times x, bring down your minus, and my h value is right here. It's 25 from right up here. Squared, bring that down, plus k right here. The k value is 80, so I'll replace this k with 80. And that is the equation right there y equals negative 80 divided by 625 times x minus 25 squared plus 80. This equation models this graph, and I'm going to show that to you in a second. So that is the first part of this problem, and there's a lot there. I don't want you to feel too overwhelmed, but let's go to part B because we're not quite done. So we answered part A. Part B is, says how far horizontally is the ball from Laura when it's 20 feet high? Well, Let's see, it's 20 feet high about right here. About 20 feet high. So what I'm going to do, remember this is feet. As the ball comes up and it's about 20 feet high on the way up and 20 feet high on the way down. So I need to figure out how far it is away from a Laura when it's 20 feet high on the way up and how far away it is from Laura when it's 20 feet high on the way down. So I basically need to figure out these two x values. And we can use algebra to do that. However, I would rather show you this on Desmos. So now we're going to answer question B. And just to reiterate, this was the answer here to question A right here, this equation. So you can bring up Desmos now on your computer screen. You go to desmos.com. I have it right here. 
And let me clear this out. I didn't mean to have this in here. You'll see this, and I'm going to punch in the equation we just came up with. So I'm going to type in here y equals y equals negative 80 divided by 625. Negative 80 divided by right here. That's how you do the fraction bar, 625. Then kind of hit this little right arrow to bring that cursor up. Then use your parentheses and type in x minus 25, close your parentheses and square it right here, plus 80. And this is the equation we came, came up with. Now, it's right over here. Here's the graph. You might have seen something like this when you first punched it in. I don't know, you might have seen something probably like this. It might have even looked like a straight line when you first punched it in like this. That happens just to hit the minus sign and zoom out. If it looks like a straight line, just zoom out till you see the graph. It's going to look something like this. Right, like so. I'll bring this up just a little bit. There we go. This graph is what I sketched. And now you can see that this equation works. Look, let's analyze this graph. Here's Laura at zero. The ball goes up in the air. It hits, hits a maximum feet of 80 right here, just like we said it did. It comes back down and it hits the ground right here at 50 feet. So this graph models exactly the path of the football. And that's a good check to punch your equation into Desmos to see if it works out, and it does. Now the goal is to figure out how far the ball is away from Laura when the when it's 20 feet in the air so i'm going to make another equation i'll click my plus sign here i'll type in this expression and i'm going to type in y equals 20 because y represents the vertical height so i'll go y equals 20 and the reason i put 20 is because i want to know how far the ball away is from laura when it's 20 feet in the air and that was the uh, question to part B. So look here. So here it's at zero feet. Boom. It hits 20 right here. I'm going to click on that. Comes back up. Hits a maximum height. It's at 20 feet in the air here again. And boom. Then it hits the ground here. Right here. And at that point it's 50 feet away from Laura. But my goal here is to figure out how high or how far to, away it is from Laura when it's 20 feet in the air. And we have the answers right here. Look. It says right here, when it's 20 feet in the air, it's 3.349 feet away from Laura. That's on the way up. And then on the way down, when it's 20 feet high in the air, it is 46.651 feet away from Laura. So that's the answer for part B. It's just the x coordinates of each one of these points. So there's two answers for part B. The first one would be 3.349 feet, and the second one would be 46.651 feet. You just need to read off those x coordinates. That's pretty much all there is to it. And I know there was a lot here, but I hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.